Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have got four Portuguese reds in front of me and I've just spent rather a long time working out uh, what order to put them all in. And I don't know whether I've got them right, I've got them vaguely in vintage order, uh, but um, in terms of uh, regions, we are all over the place. Let's just dig in and see where we get to. First one is Ramos Reserva 2010. Uh, three of these wines made by a guy called, uh, well, made with, with uh, the input of João Portugal Ramos, uh, one of uh, Portugal's uh, most um, well-travelled, uh, handsomest, uh, most elegant, uh, most talented uh, winemakers. Anyway, uh, so we're here in the Alentejo. Uh, so wait, wait, well, the, the, the most southern bit. So it's Vinho Regional Alentejano, uh, grapes here, Trincadera, Aragones, which is the same as Tempranillo, and uh, Syrah. So let's give it a whirl. Strawberries, vanilla, spice, there's a, a, a nice woodiness here, it feels like, it comes from, you, you can tell it comes from a warm region, there's this rounded, warm, uh, juicy, slightly cooked strawberry character, um, maybe a bit of blackberries in there, but it's the strawberries that are really strong, and uh, that touch of spice, never quite sure in Portugal whether it's from the, the vineyard or from oak, uh, sometimes they confound you and you, have a, you, you think, I swear there's oak here, and then you find out there's no barrel anywhere near it. Then when you come to taste it, the um, other berries kick in, maybe a bit of the blackberries, maybe a bit of the raspberries. Um, one of those wines that uh, at the moment it feels a little bit uh, uh, closed in, so I get this slight boot polish type of character. Uh, but my experience with wines like that is um, it give it a couple of hours and that character just goes, it's like it goes, it's like this and it's all stern and, and then it just goes, ah, and relaxes and there's a far more user friendly wine. At the moment, I like it for its spice and fruit. I think that there's a, a more uh, generous, warm-hearted wine to uh, to appear from there. Yeah, as I say, in a couple of hours. So if you're going to have it, um, shove it into a swig it into a jug, give it a good pour, or pour it out like an hour or so before you serve it. Uh, but pretty good start. Let's see how we get on. Uh, I think this is another of his wines. Uh, this is Quinta de Foz da Rus, um, and uh, so we're in the Beiras region. Um, so we're we're back. Uh, so we're north of Lisbon here, south of Oporto, and Beiras is the region of which Dao and Bairada uh, form a part. And so it, it, which shows through in the grapes here. Uh, so the main grape of Bairada, or the classic grape of Bairada, is one called Barga, which lives up to its name. A bit of a hard beast um, needs to be tamed. Um, plus Turiga Nacional, which also also is a slightly forbidding character um, um, and uh, one of the main grapes of, uh, of Dao. Together, let's see. Now I'm not going to say that uh, Barga is like Nebbiolo, uh, certainly not in really in terms of flavour, but what it is like it is uh, that it's perfumed and it's tannic and it needs taming and it needs the right terroir to get it to, to sing. Here, um, what's happening is, is you're getting this violet, peppery character, uh, that for me is very Barga, and then you're getting some of the, the more uh, exotic, um, spicy gingerbread and uh, maybe orange peel bits of Turiga Nacional coming through. It smells good. And as with the first one, feels like a wine that is um, quite tight, quite closed, and will benefit from more air. I mean, this is a couple of years older than the one before, uh, but uh, I think I think there's, uh, uh, it looks good now. I think there's an even better wine uh, in a couple of hours, or in if you want to keep it in a couple, two or three years, probably last even longer, because both Barbara and Turiga Nacional make um, very long-lived wines, uh, but the weight is definitely worth it. Let's try uh, Tegas Ridge. Tegas Ridge Reserve, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Turiga Nacional, again 2008 vintage. So I think this is probably the cheapest of the four. Comes in about eight quid. So the region here is uh, Tejo, what used to be called Riba Tejo, and uh, well, actually Tejo takes in a few uh, a few other places that uh, uh, no one had really ever heard of, apart from if they lived in those places before. And uh, so the idea of uh, Tagus Ridge and uh, its sister brand Tagus Creek is they blend a familiar grape variety, so here uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon, with a uh, local grape, so Turiga Nacional, and they usually do it pretty well. Here, I stick my nose in, and I get a rounded, soft warmth, probably more in common with the uh, the first one, the Ramos Reserva, than the uh, taut precision and spice and perfume of the uh, the Foz da Rus, but still smells good and very Portuguese. Soft, rich and spicy, it's got this red fruit, dark fruit, touches of tobacco, there's a, a maybe a little touch of Britannomyces, I don't, I'm not sure about that, um, uh, which is giving a, a slightly barnyardy character, but it's uh, there in the background, it's not taking centre stage. 
Um, compared with the previous two, maybe the finish is a little bit on that dry side. Uh, I get some of those what I call the skinny tannins. It, it tastes of um, slightly shriveled up grape skins, whereas the ones before had more perky freshness about them. So good, but um, well, cheapest so far uh, and least favourite so far. Let's try the final one. And we are the furthest north here, uh, but we're in the Douro Valley. Uh, it doesn't say Douro on it, it says Vigno Regional Douriense 2007, and it's Cedro de Noval. So it's uh, Quinta de Noval's table wine. They do have um, uh, one that is called Quinta de Noval. Uh, this is it, the second wine. And it's not a Douro table wine because uh, they put a bit of Syrah in with the other grapes. Let's see what it's like. And it's very odd doing them this way. I pray there, there were arguments for doing this one first. Um, and I stick my nose in there and there's a, uh, a freshness and spice. Maybe there was a little bit of touch of that freshness and spice on the Fosdar Foz Roos. Uh, but here, um, the oldest wine. Uh, but uh, yeah, it still feels like it's got some perky freshness about it. Uh, so there's the rounded, there's a plummy character here. Uh, I don't know whether the plums are, are from the Syrah or from, from some of the other... The, port related grapes but uh, it smells good it smells fragrant it smells a bit more grown up uh, than uh, than some portuguese wines it's got tobacco it's got a bit, bit of ash character like you know the ashes the day after you've had uh, a fire the wood fire in a grate something of that there's a plumminess there's some cherries uh, berries um, very interesting wine and um, I, I mean it's it, this is the little brother uh, Quinta de Noval itself I can't remember when they first started doing it, 2004. Um, but uh, this is this is this is looking really good. Um, and uh, I'd, uh, in terms of um, uh, favourite wines, I mean, it's for me, it's a toss-up between that and the Foz de Arus. They're, they're they're both pretty good. Um, but again, once once again, flavours that you don't get in other parts of the world. That's that's what for me what uh, really makes Portugal stand out. Good flavours that you don't find in other parts of the world. So uh, go out there, fill your boots with uh, Portuguese wines, and uh, maybe try some of these in the process. See you soon.